S'more Outdoor, Episode 1. Welcome to S'more Outdoor, where we speak with authors, entrepreneurs, and business owners about how the outdoors has affected their life and their projects. This show is to remind you of the healing properties of the outdoors. So are you ready to learn what the nature effect can do for your life? Well, here's your host, Brett Trout. Hello and welcome to S'more Outdoor. I'm your host, Brett Trout, and this is the podcast dedicated to reminding you to get out and experience a nature effect. My goal is to help you reestablish your connection with nature so you can live with childlike wonder today. I'm excited to be here, and uh, today I have my good friend, an advocate, and a very special guest, Dr. David Powers. How you doing, David? I'm doing pretty good. Awesome. Thanks for being with me today. Dr. David Powers is a problem solver, but sometimes that makes him a problem creator as well. He is a best-selling author in the areas of cognitive psychology and experimental education theory. He is a decorated veteran of both the Marine Corps and a founding member of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. His mission in life is to find the magical best cup of coffee in the world. Well, thanks for being here today. Why don't you go ahead and just uh, give a little bit of more of a background of who you are, and uh, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Uh, well, my main occupation, I run a think tank uh, out here in South Carolina, right uh, you know, within a mile of the ocean. So you know, plenty of outdoors here. Clients just come to me looking for unique solutions. And uh, I'm a huge comic book, zombie sci-fi nerd and so a lot of the solutions i bring to them come from you know different ideas of the future in other words so it gets i get to play with my hobbies a lot and i've been following you for a little while and uh, as the coffee scholar so i know you're yeah. you're big into coffee so when i hear that magical best cup of coffee uh, you know it's it's always fun looking for that just that one cup of coffee that you can you can grab hold of and, and make your own but one thing when you sent me this this bio that uh I came across and you said the founding member of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. That's a pretty big deal. Can you go ahead and dive into that and how that came about? That was actually uh, an interesting thing. I'd worked for FEMA uh, for a long time before that. We would go to disaster sites and set up field hospitals, uh, kind of like the, the old TV show MASH. And, uh, once 9-11 happened, they rolled a lot of us into Homeland Security. And uh, I mean, for me, being a nerd about uh, you know certificates and uh, you know, trophies, that kind of thing. It was really cool because not that often are federal departments created. And so because we were there in the first year, we were considered founding members for the entire department. You know, went on from there with uh, some of the counterterror stuff and all that. It's actually a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. No, that's exciting. That's yeah, definitely something that I didn't know about you. Dave and I actually met about four years ago at an event in, in Colorado. And uh, Dave has, has been a, a huge advocate of my soap at Mountain Man Soap. And uh, so I always appreciate that. He, he takes good pictures of them and, and just has a lot of fun with it. So, you know, thank you, David. I, I We only usually talk through email, so it's, yeah. it's nice to be able to say thanks on, on it live. Oh, a weird thing about when we met, and blame all this on Kevin Miller, but I hate staying with people. Like when I go to events and they stick me in a room with somebody, I'm, I'm very territorial about my stuff. And uh, you were the perfect roommate. I mean, well, you, didn't, you didn't drink my Mountain Dews. I, you gave me soap. I let you sleep. You know, yeah. So that, those were good things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was fun. And it's uh, it's always fun going to events like that, especially overnight events where you can room with somebody and, uh, you know, just end up getting a friendship out of that and taking yeah. that to uh, the next level. So it's it's been fun knowing you and uh, just having you as an advocate and vice versa. So what I like to do is, is uh, people like quotes. And if you look online, there's tons and tons of different quotes on Pinterest and Facebook and a lot of nature quotes that people like as well. And uh, so since this show is about the outdoors, you know, I thought that it would be neat just to kind of hear what what people's uh, what inspires people with uh, nature quotes and what their favorite either nature quote or mantra is. Um, and possibly, you know, how you believe that the S'more Outdoor listeners can apply this to their life, whether they get out on a regular basis or whether they've come across the show and they really haven't, they don't have the outdoors in their life yet, you know, because they're just kind of stuck. Go ahead and take it away and just share with uh, what you had found and what the quote that you like. Yeah, my favorite outdoor quote, or at least the one that inspires me, is from uh, Henry David Thoreau uh, when he wrote Walden. It's that life is a journey and not a destination. And uh, though the quote doesn't, you know, it doesn't speak of nature specifically, 
Um, I was actually in Alaska when I first came across that quote, and I bought a little trinket off of a guy that uh, he, he would live out in the woods and just go off all winter and just winter, uh, you know, out in the frozen wastelands of Alaska and then come out in the summertime and make these trinkets that he worked on all or sell these trinkets he worked on all year. And so I bought one that had this quote on it. And, you know, from that point forward, I was, you know, that inspires me to get outside because it's not all about, you know, a summit or finishing a particular trail or, or just setting up a campsite. It's, it's all of it. Uh, you know, the whole journey, not just the end point. No, that's a, that's an awesome quote. And I, I really love his, uh, love Walden. The reason why, you know, even though that quote doesn't specifically speak to the outdoors, what I love about him is that the outdoors, uh, and he spent a lot of time obviously outdoors, but it inspired him, you know, and inspired him so much to be able to even <clears throat> get out and think and to be able to write that. I know that I think it was I was reading that Emerson uh, said at, said at his eulogy something along the lines of if he had spent all his time indoors we wouldn't have such great works from him. Thanks for sharing that the the listeners of the show. I want to go ahead and take it back to a, a childhood memory of yours. Tell a story from your childhood about your experience of the outdoors. Maybe the first time or the first memory that you have of the outdoors or whatever story that you had come up with. And go ahead and, and tell us that story. Yeah, my uh, my earliest best memory uh, was just me and my dad outdoors. I grew up out in the country, you know, in a big log cabin that my parents built. And uh, we surrounded by farms and creeks and all those things. And as a kid, instead of having video games and TV, I would explore. And just all the time out there building dams in the creeks and trying to catch minnows and the best memory, though, is my dad teaching me how to hunt crawdads. And uh, for those of you in the rest of the country, since I'm down in the deep south, um, I'm talking about crayfish, you know, those little miniature freshwater lobsters. And uh, my dad would teach me how to hunt those. Um, you know, you flip over the big rocks and they'll scurry out. And then you try to catch them without getting pinched. And, uh, you know, you, you lose most of them. It's more, more of a fun thing than a hunting for food thing. But uh, just a tremendous experience, just being out there getting soaking wet in the summertime, hunting these little creatures and, and flipping rocks over. And just, you know, that shaped what I want to give my kids about the outdoors. All the fun with family and with water and with animals. And just that shaped everything else that I look forward to. No, that's awesome, man. Great story. You know, one thing that I, I love about what you're doing with your kids is that you're making sure that they're getting outdoors as well. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of people, it, it's it's a struggle for a lot of people to get outdoors these days, especially to feel safe taking their kids out. And a lot of people don't have the opportunity like you and I had where we lived in, a, in a, an environment uh, where we grew up around the outdoors. And this is actually the first time I've ever heard that you live, you grew up in a log cabin. So that's even more cool. Uh, yeah. So it's excited <laughs> about that. Um, so let me go ahead and go into a, you know, more of an adult, I guess, outdoor experience mm -hmm. and uh, tell a story of a time when you visited the most beautiful place you had ever been to um, and take us to that time in your life. Tell us that story and share with us uh, that experience and the effect that what I call the nature effect the effect that nature had on you. And uh, this is a, one of those rare stories. I actually know the date, uh, December 14th, 1999. I was climbing in Africa. Uh, one of my goals is to climb the seven summits. And, uh, you know, I've only gotten two so far, but when I was in Africa climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, it, it was a hard climb. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't as physically ready for that as I should have been. And so that made it all the more enjoyable, though, because I had to work for it. But I got to the summit the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest peak on that on the continent. And there I was standing on this this glacier, you know, with a high point sign behind me, very few people up there. And I'm looking down and I can see savanna and jungle and lakes and more mountains off in the distance. And it's just it was so incredible for me because the impact of that, it finally just hit me that I'm actually standing on top of an entire continent just looking out over all these climate zones and all these animals and people. And I don't know, it just, it made me feel like I could just conquer the entire world in that moment. And, uh, you know, it, even when I summit smaller peaks, I like to take that feeling back with me because not that I'm trying to conquer the world literally, but I'm trying to conquer the fears in my life. I'm trying to, to live my dreams. I'm trying to help my kids live their dreams. And so, you know, I look back on those experiences to, you know, to move me into that. Even when I'm inside and not outdoors, those outdoor experiences still are a draw to, to make me push harder. I hadn't heard that story before. So thank you for sharing that. 
personally, I'm not up on, on geography over in Africa, but what, what country is? Or yeah, yeah it's in uh, Tanzania. Tanzania, okay. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool, dude. And um, I love how you took it and, and related that with the challenges that we face in our lives. And because I'm a huge advocate of people getting outdoors just to overcome those personal challenges in their yeah. lives. And a lot of people, and a lot of people that I follow online and listen to, they talk about margin in their life. Uh, like Michael Hyatt, you know, he talks about having margin in their life. And a lot of people get so caught up in their electrical paradise. Yeah. that They don't get out as much as they should. So for somebody like you and, and, you know, talking about Mount Kilimanjaro and relating that, I loved just the way that you related that to overcoming the challenges that you face in your life. So thank you for sharing that story. I came up with this term a while ago called the nature effect. And it's basically simple, you know, how nature has an impact on you, how it affects you. How does the nature affect have an impact in your business and your life today? It, uh, it's weird because as much as I love nature, my business has very little to do with it. And uh, so nature effect, the nature effect keeps me balanced and calm. Uh, it gives me the energy to do what I have to do because, um, you know, like most people, I, I'm stuck inside. Even though I'm self-employed, I'm stuck inside an office under the, uh, you know, the fluorescent light bulbs all day. And I find that if I don't take periodic breaks, if I don't get enough nature, just being outside, that uh, I, I can tell I get real grumpy. And, uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm generally unhappy if I don't get enough nature in my day. Yeah, well, and that's that's something that I, I can relate there as well. It's one of those things is that being inside and being in underneath electronics and, and artificial lighting can have that effect on us. That's why I love so much that people get out, that people that do get outdoors, they understand that feeling. That's what I want to do is just kind of help spread the message of, of exactly what you experience uh, when you are stuck inside all day and, and that irritation and that grumpiness, um, the unhappiness that you experience in your life. That's what this message is about, just to kind of share stories, your story and, and other stories about how people utilize that to help them relax and unplug and, and become inspired uh, through the outdoors. Yeah. So, and, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the electronic paradise. And one thing I like to encourage people to do is just I, I understand you, you need to be on electronics a lot of the time, especially, you know, laptops, phones. But just take them outside. The Wi-Fi will reach. You know, just go outside and, and enjoy the wind in your face instead of having to turn on a ceiling fan just to, to feel some fresh air. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a Kindle book right now. And instead of being outside or being inside writing it, I take my laptop in the backyard and just kind of sit in a chair and just write. Uh, the weather yeah. the weather is beautiful right now here in California, so it's not very it's cool. Well, it's always beautiful in California, right? Well, for the most part, <laughs> it, this we, this summer it was you know over a hundred degrees for a month and a half straight. So I'm not a huge advocate of being over hundred, but I I do yeah. live I do live near Yosemite and Sequoia, so I'm lucky enough to get up there and, and cool down a little bit on that. So well, thank you for sharing sharing that. When we talk about being inspired outdoors. Um, or inspiration and, and getting outdoors for that inspiration. What was one idea that you've had that was inspired from your time outdoors? I'm a big advocate of rapid skill acquisition. And by that, I mean, you know, people, they're afraid to get into things because it takes so much time. And, uh, you know, Malcolm Gladwell talked about the mythical 10,000 hours it takes to learn anything. And I'm a big fan of just uh, breaking that down and, you know, tearing apart the barriers. I mean, most people that I run into, they're afraid to get outdoors into activities because they think, well, I'm going to have to buy all this gear. I'm going to have to take a class. And, you know, I tell them just, Hey, come with me. I've got the rock climbing gear. I know the place we'll go and I'll teach you. You know, we'll find a, a place where you feel comfortable and safe and uh, we'll take you up on the mountain and you don't have to go through all that just to, to experience rock climbing enough to know if it's something you want to do more. And I mean, you could do that with any activity. Uh, I live here at the beach and so, you know, surfing, skimboarding, uh, windsurfing, scuba diving, any of those things, you can actually find ways to try it out. You know, low cost, low barrier to entry that just encourages you to get out and do more in the outdoors. Uh, that's awesome. So rapid, let me make sure I got that right. Rapid skill acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's kind awesome. of a, it's a method uh, just to. You know, to, to get away from the, the idea that you have to spend so much time and money just to do anything. 
Where can uh, where can our listeners uh, find more information out about that? I actually have a book on Kindle. Uh, it's available on Amazon. It's just it's called Rapid Skill Acquisition One Hundred One. Okay, awesome. Well. I will make sure that I have a link to that in the show notes. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. So now yeah. I'm, I'm going to dive into, you know, the more of like kind of quick answers questions and or uh, I don't even know what to call them yet. Uh, but <laughs> but it's more of just to kind of help people. Um, well, we'll just dive into that. You know, I'm, okay. I'm, I want to hear what you have to say about these questions that I've come up with. So what do you do when you talked a little bit about, but what do you do when you get outdoors? Uh, for me, it's all physical activity. Physical um, activity. Yeah, and my personality is built to, uh, you know, I love endpoints, and so I like, you know, finishing trails, hitting summits, uh, doing things that I can kind of make a check mark in my mind that hey, I, f- I finished this, I completed. Well, now recently you came out with uh, the title of the Rugged Dad. How did that come about? Yeah, actually working on that. I mean, I have four kids and. A lot of dads, when they get that many kids, they they tend to think, well, life is over. And I'll be honest with you, I thought that with my first one. I thought, you know, all these summits I want to do, all these trips, I'm never going to do it now. But I found with four kids, I just find ways to blend them into that. Uh, My kids go climbing with me. They go swimming with me, kayaking, whatever. Um, You know, as soon as they're old enough to hold a paddle, I've got them in the water. The next question is, uh, we talked, you talked a little bit about uh, the negative effects, but if you can dive in, maybe some other things that people might be able to relate with. When you don't spend time outdoors, what negative effects do you see in your life and or your business? Uh, stress. I mean, the stress just builds up. And it's like when I get outside and I get into an activity, it, it's, you know, I pop that cork and all the stress just comes out. It, I turn it into the physical activity and it just burns away. How do you make sure this is one of the most important things to do in your life? Um, I try to integrate it into everything I do. My office is a few miles from my house, and so I bike to work. And, uh, you know, I go to work in an office, so I have to have a briefcase, right? So I bought a, a little child trailer to uh, hook to the back of my bicycle. And now when I bike to work, I, it's, you know, it's got my briefcase and all my daily work stuff in it. Can you share one of your favorite places that you like to go to get away and think and what that place means to you? Being in the southeast, one of my favorite spots is in the Great Smoky Mountains. There's a trail there. Uh, it's the Rainbow Falls Trail. And it's really fun for me because it's a, a several-mile hike. I mean, it's fairly short. A lot of kids can do it. But at the end are the Rainbow Falls. It's the, these falls where you can actually jump in and swim. Uh, the water's freezing cold even in the summer, which, I mean, to me, that makes it more fun. But you can jump in. You can actually dive off the falls. And it's just something where it's an entry point where people that don't even really know the outdoors – can experience so much in one place. Now, is that the like the lower end of the Smoky Mountains? I'm not obviously not familiar with the, uh, the yeah, East Coast yeah, too much. it's uh, like lower elevation in the Smokies. What is the best advice that you have for someone who wants to get outdoors more, but they struggle with the limited amount of time that they have? Just start small. I mean, uh, when people are trying to lose weight, you know, they tell them to park further away from the store. Well, for me, with the outdoors. You know, if you're, uh, I mean, so many people use treadmills and they'll use uh, bicycle trainers in the house. And so just start doing some of that outside. I mean, do the stuff you already do. Just move it outdoors. One of the things that I find is that people do have, they do struggle with getting outdoors as much. Uh, They get caught up. They're working all the time and working so much that they just, when they come home, they just want to sit back and relax and, and really not, not get outside and do things. And I, f- I find that some days that I'm like that as well, uh, where I'll miss a day, you know, yeah. and, and I won't be able to get up. And I've been heading over to my parents' house in Ojai quite a bit, so I haven't really spent as much time up in, up in the mountains as much as I would like to, to get up there. Uh, but it's just making sure that you make a point to get out and, and even if it's only for one hour a week, uh, yeah. I, I like to refer to that as the, the weekly green hour. And, <laughs> uh, at least if you can get out for one hour a week, it's going to help so much, uh, to, and the impact in your life. And just for that moment, you'll kind of experience the nature effect and, and how that stress reduction, uh, that that's one of the biggest things that, that people experience when they get outdoors is that just the relief of that stress. Well, thanks so much for being with me here today, David. If you can go ahead and just share some final words of encouragement for our S'more Outdoor listeners and how they can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Yeah, um, like I said, my name is Dr. David Powers. 
you can find me at drdavidpowers.com. And, uh, you know, if you ever want to come to the Myrtle Beach here and spend some time in the ocean or in the river with me, I mean, I'm more than happy to do that. We'll get you out and get you wet. And he will teach you rapid skill acquisition. So yeah. thanks again so much, Dave, for being here with me and uh, just sharing your story and inspiring others to get outdoors. I'm actually inspired right now to go out and do something outside, <laughs> right? And But yeah. just to, to inspire these listeners and, and people who, who just don't get out as much, it's so important for them too. And, and I appreciate you being here and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, sounds good. That's it for today's episode of S'more Outdoor. I'm just so excited to be here with you today to share the stories and outdoor experiences from people like David. A few things before I go, you can head on over to s'moreoutdoor.com to see the recap of David's show on his show notes page, along with ways that you can connect with him. Just type David in the search bar. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, we would love it if you would leave a comment on his page where David and I will respond. To stay updated with new episodes, make sure you subscribe to the podcast by either clicking subscribe in iTunes, hitting the subscribe button on David's show notes page, or from the app on your phone. If you'd leave a comment and rating for the show in iTunes, that would be awesome. This helps to get the show noticed so others like you and I can learn about how the nature effect can have an impact in their lives and become inspired by these stories. Also, like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash more outdoor and follow us on Twitter. The username is at the at symbol B-A Trout, B-A-T-R-A-U-D-T. And make sure you sign up for S'more Outdoor. That way you won't miss out on any exclusive content I send out. So I hope David's story has inspired you to reconnect with nature and start living with childlike wonder again. Thank you for tuning in to the show that's changing lives around the world. Until next time, I challenge you to do something this week to get S'more Outdoor. Outdoor.